With episode 5 and 6 out, we got a massive bombshell and eerie foreshadowing that no one's talking about that may spell out the end of the series. Everyone knew John was Lyanna's son. Most people assumed rightly he was also the son of Rhaegar. But what most people forget is that under the information we had before, he was still a bastard. Until now. A simple throwaway line in the boring as hell Sam and Gilly scenes may spell out the finale of the entire series. Let's check out the scene. What does annulment mean? It's when a man sets aside his lawful wife. Maynard says here that he issued an annulment for Prince Ragger and remarried him to someone else at the same time in a secret ceremony in Dawn. What annulment means, Miss Gilly, is that we have a new heir to the Iron Throne, Mr. John Targaryen. John is not a Rivers, not a Blackfire. He is all in, balls out, fire and blood. The implications are pretty clear. If you look at Cersei as a usurper, then Danny's not the true heir to Westeros. John is. And I don't think this is a throwaway line. It resembles, it's kind of similar to the Young Griff storyline from the books, only it's even more potent since the proof of John's birthright is written down, currently with Sam, meaning it's a plot line on the move and it's portable enough to spring up at any moment. And now take a look at where Sam is headed, back north. You know who's north? Bran. So Bran knows that John is a Targaryen, because he saw the scene at the Tower of Joy, and Sam has proof that John is the rightful heir, but both of those pieces of evidence are flimsy. One is a brother who has a vested interest in seeing his older brother on the Iron Throne, and the other is his best friend who has what could be claimed as a forged document. George R.R. R. Santa Claus did say that the ending was going to be bittersweet. Sure, it could mean the casualties of beloved characters in the War for the Dawn, but that follows a traditional hero's journey, and Game of Thrones is anything but traditional. Which brings me to the only thing hotter than wildfire, Daenerys. This episode showed us a few things about her besides her inexplicable lady boner for Jon. I mean, come on. Besides sulking, moping, whining, and generally looking constipated, what other personality traits does Jon have? Which brings me to how brutal Danny has been since she's gotten to Westeros. For a person who prides herself on being the breaker of chains and freeing people from bondage, she finds an odd way of showing that when she gives the Tarly soldiers uh, the choice between death or slavery. And then instead of uh, getting her advisors to help her make a decision to what to do with the Tarly commander and her boy, uh, she just sets them both on fire in front of them to intimidate them into their indentured servitude. The producers are speeding up her descent into madness. I mean, in Marine, she allowed the slave soldiers to go home and she even treated with the masters of Yunkai, with Marine, with Astapor, which is a custom in Westeros that everyone observes, including Daenerys. But here she just rides in with the back of her dragon and sets everyone on fire, releasing a horde of murdering bastards along the way. She's becoming more and more like the Mad King. This is such a jarring change of character, it'll give you whiplash. So they're planting seeds that she's beginning to distrust her counsel, specifically those that advocate passive diplomatic tactics. But they're speeding up her descent on purpose. There has to be an endgame here. Everyone originally thought the War for the Dawn would come in the second half of the season, but this episode makes it appear as if they're switching the calendar having John bring back proof of the White Walkers, uniting all the armies against the Night King, then having the remaining players fight for the Iron Throne over the ashes of the war. My thought is that they're speeding up Danny's descent into madness, so when this revelation is sprung, they can claim betrayal and then fight against John. It could also be why they brought back Gendry. Remember in season one what he said to Ned about his mother? And then he started asking me about my mother. Your mother? Who she was, what she looked like. What did you sell him? She died when I was little. She had yellow hair. The prevailing theory is that Gendry is actually Robert Baratheon's only true-born heir. And when Jon's team comes to King's Landing to show Cersei the army of the dead, guess who will be with them? 
her only true-born son, Gendry Baratheon. So we'd have Danny and her claim, her army and her dragons, who will probably die in the War of the Dawn, Jon's true claim to the throne, and Gendry and Cersei's claim to the throne. At the end of the day, there's a reason they confirmed Jon's claim in a written, provable way, and gave it to a mobile Sam Tarly. Remember, Bran knows Jon is a Targaryen, and Sam knows he's a true-born heir. This jarring change in Danny's demeanor, combined with these new players entering the field, makes me think that the War for the Dawn will start and end at the first half of Season 7, and the final arc of Game of Thrones, the series finale, will be the War for the Ashes. Thanks for watching.